Hello, everyone, and thanks for, for coming. Uh, we'll talk about a very interesting topic here today, and I'd like to propose um, the goal for you, for every one of you. And the goal is very simple. Let's think about ideas during this presentation that you can apply and you can uh, use in your team. Uh, so it's very simple, and uh, the reason why, uh, because every one of you has a different experience and very different uh, knowledge. Um, I'm as a fan of uh, being, uh, I'm a fan of learning uh, different areas of knowledge. And uh, it's very easy and it's very nice to uh, build ideas when you combine uh, experience from different fields. Before I start, like the first thing, I'll introduce myself. And um, I'm a developer uh, with quite a lot of experience, maybe 16 years. I uh, do coding a lot. Uh, this is my uh, main uh, task I'm doing. But uh, along with this role, I'm also uh, currently I'm in those roles that you see here. Um, this is what I. Uh, this is what. This is who I am uh, during maybe five years, uh, five recent years. So I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm currently a CEO of my uh, small company. Um, I also CTO in uh, two other startups, and you can see that uh, the uh, team lead, tech lead, teacher, and the mentor. Um, those uh, those roles, uh, most of those roles are very related to people. And starting from my uh, when I started my career, all the work I done uh, was uh, related to people. I teach, then I mentor, um, I hire, I, um, I build the teams. This is why this topic is very important for me. And uh, I have something to share. Unfortunately, there is no uh, design skill here. So there is no design role. So, um, but that's fine. When I started to, talk my, uh, to tell my friends that I'll be speaking at the conference and uh, I'll, I'll tell the, the topic, uh, they usually ask me, what is cohesive? And uh, it's really hard to explain this just in a few words, but, uh, but Patrick Lencioni, in one of uh, his books, uh, described the cohesive team with those uh, metrics. Uh, so, the cohesive team, it's hard to say, like, uh, we feel the cohesive team. We can say that this team is cohesive and this one is not cohesive. So, how we see this? Between team members in cohesive team, uh, there is a trust. What means trust in uh, very simple words? Uh, trust means that I, uh, I can predict reaction of the other person uh, that will act uh, in specific uh, situation. So, for example, um, I can predict that uh, when I'm doing something wrong, this uh, person can say me this, or can uh, help me, or if I ask for help, I will get this help. And uh, so this is a very simple description of the trust. Cohesive team members easily jump into conflict, because conflict, this is the way how we find the best possible solution. We can't find solution that good enough if we are not uh, talk uh, to each other, and those uh, communication uh, could, uh, from the outside, it could be even aggressive. But uh, as everyone uh, in the team um, trust each other, everyone understand that this is uh, for the big reason. This is for the reason to find a really great solution. The feedback, this is the uh, like continuation of this, because uh, cohesive team easily share feedback. Easily share feedback, uh, between uh, like give and receive feedback. And what is more important is that uh, it both uh, positive and negative uh, feedback. And even negative, it's more important because negative, this is something that we give uh, to, uh, to help people, to help person become better. And because of trust, um, in cohesive team, no one actually takes this personally, but uh, react and uh, answer. In the cohesive team, the quality is a top priority. 
And uh, in different cases, quality could be, for example, quality could be speed. When we do something, uh, we have to do something fast, this is the speed. But uh, the, in the cohesive team, uh, the quality is uh, something that we can't uh, agree on something lower than we agree before. And this leads to conflicts, giving feedback, uh, but we are not allowed to do something uh, not that good as we agreed. And the, very, and the last thing, I think it's uh, really hard to achieve, but uh, this is uh, like the top uh, metric for the cohesive team is the goal priorities. And by goal priorities, I mean here uh, setting a team goal um, upfront your personal goals. So we, we have those goals, uh, the team goal more important. And the social, what is the social technology then? So this is the next question uh, before we start uh, to see uh, it's in action and how to build it. In, in very simple words, social technology, this is the process. This is the process of uh, building those metrics, building those uh, factors described here. In, uh, in general, it's a building a trust between team members. And before we start with the uh, actual story, uh, another, another uh, word uh, we will uh, talk about, this is the energy. Because I will mean energy in, the, in this specific meaning. This is the combination of the emotion and focus. Because uh, focus, this is something that we control. And uh, by controlling focus, uh, we spend energy. And it's very energy kind of not efficient because uh, every one of you can imagine how it's hard to keep focus in one thing for a long period of time. And emotion, this is something that uh, fills us with energy. And uh, so, that, so the idea is, if we can combine um, generating emotion uh, with focus, this will bring us, uh, this will generate energy. And then, uh, with social technology, we'll, we will align this energy with the team goal. Now, the story. Um, how social technology could work. Uh, imagine a group of people, and uh, yes, this is a group of people uh, in the room or in the office, and in one specific uh, moment, team lead uh, says, we have a goal, and it, looks, and it looks like this. He said that this is what we have to do, this is the benefits, this is what we, uh, this is what we have to achieve, and the benefits we will receive from this. And uh, this is cool. He uh, stand and uh, describe this as a, new, as a new thing. At this specific moment, um, every, uh, every person, uh, the people in this uh, group, uh, starts to become enthusiastic. They like this because uh, nothing happened before, and now we have a goal. Now, Something happened. Now we, uh, we have something to do. We have a, a new technology, new product, a new feature set, or at least this is something new. Uh, this brings energy to the, to the team. And now it looks like uh, we can start working. And, and we do, and, 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 like, and we start working. But then, uh, what happened next is that uh, direction of this, of this energy uh, right now, it's, uh, it is right. It, it's uh, directed to the team goal. But then everyone go home, uh, think about uh, like different problems, different challenges in the life. And inside of every team, uh, inside of every person, uh, we have pictures similar like this. And uh, there are a lot of things that eat, eat our energy and uh, change our focus. Uh, we think about... Uh, very different, uh, yeah, we think about anything. And uh, this uh, changed our focus. And in the end of the day, uh, maybe in a few days or weeks or months, it doesn't matter. Uh, the picture will, uh, will be like this. And uh, this situation uh, is still good, because as you can see, no one work uh, in the opposite direction. Um, they all uh, working and uh, thinking about the uh, proposed goal. But uh, if you are a physic, 
uh, you can calculate the vectors here, and uh, it's uh, much less than uh, uh, was uh, initial state. Th this. But again, I mentioned in the first in the first slide of this story is that this is a group of people, and what we want to do is uh, we want to make the team, and the team. This is something uh, that this is the uh, next level of building system, um, because to build the system. For example, uh, a very good uh, uh, could be example with uh, models and relationships. Uh, if we have models, this is just the models and classes. But then, when we build relations, how it depends, uh, like uh, one to many, many to many, uh, having those connections, we actually have a logic. And the logic, this is something that we have on top of those elements. And this is what we want to achieve with the team. We have elements, but then we want to connect them so that uh, it's become a real team and we can have empowering uh, each, uh, each other. So our idea is uh, to create a social technology that will generate those relations, that will generate those relations between team members, and those relations uh, should help us uh, to solve uh, the challenge of uh, generating energy and uh, applying this to the right direction. So our uh, final picture uh, will look similar to this. Those green lines, uh, this is a connection between team members that actually uh, make the group of people a team. And what it is, uh, uh, so this is the trust. This is the trust between team members and uh, at this specific moment, when we have this, uh, the, the group becomes team. But the challenge with this is that uh, even if we have it, uh, if, if, even if we build it, uh, with time, it's uh, going down, and the uh, quality of this energy drops. So this is why uh, we have to build a technology that keep this uh, structure, uh, that keep this structure in the time. And now we'll, I'll try to uh, give some examples and tips on how to build a social technology that helps wo uh, to work in the time. First of all, um, it, uh, it should be emotional and honest. Because uh, we can't generate emotions without honesty, and uh, emotions, this is, the, our, this is our bridge to uh, like deeper motivations that we have inside every team member, and this is the source of uh, this is the source of energy. It's really hard to do this with developers, but uh, there are ways, of course, and even uh, small steps that we can do uh, will help a lot. The second uh, the second tip and the second uh, the second step that we have to do, it's uh, we have the process uh, should encourage communication in very different ways. Be uh, we can encourage communication uh, building, for example, um, let's say we have uh, daily stand-ups. This, this is the social technology that actually uh, encourages communication because we have to talk uh, on, on the daily stand-ups. And the good thing is that likes will work too. Uh, by this, I mean um, communication between team members can be built um, by giving some like to, uh, to the progress, for example, to commit or uh, to building uh, to new features deplo uh, deployed or um, anything that we can programmatically build, uh, all those uh, communication will work too. We have to uh, frequently remind about direction and about, uh, about the goal. So this is the third uh, point uh, in the building this technology. That it should be a process that reminds every team member, every team member uh, about the, uh, the team goal. We have to help uh, the team to keep the pace. And the lead by example. That's definitely every social technology should uh, come uh, from the uh, from the leader. Uh, there is no way that uh, someone uh, inside the team uh, can build technology and uh, can implement some uh, process that uh, that 
that work for a long period of time. We will not uh, do something that leader uh, will not. Another thing, uh, when we want to apply uh, the technology, um, we have to have organizational resource. The thing is, um, organizational res resource means that someone has to do those steps. Someone has to organize the process. Someone has to organize the process of communication, of building those periodic events, uh, keep everything uh, al aligned with the process. And as a process, uh, it requires also uh, three roles. Uh, the enthusiast uh, who will uh, love the process and who will, uh, who will like, uh, who want to implement this and uh, um, he live with this. And the manager who actually uh, plan the events, uh, who uh, very uh, precisely uh, plan events, uh, teach uh, team members about the process, uh, and keep everything going. And the godfather, the someone, uh, if something is going wrong, uh, he can come and say, uh, that should be this way. And, um, and the thing is, uh, it's not possible to combine all those uh, three roles in one person. Uh, maybe two, but not three. So for Installing or applying the social technology process in our team, uh, we, have to ha we have to have uh, at least uh, two uh, people uh, who will do this. And now uh, we can uh, combine. Uh, we can uh, we, we can compare uh, two things. Uh, sometimes, uh, when we want to change or uh, improve the atmosphere inside the team, we use budget to buy things, but uh, it's more important, but, buy, but things can uh, fix a situation uh, maybe for one or two days. And the key idea is that we have to have a process, and we have to have the process that generates energy and uh, align this energy with the team goals. Let's talk now about examples. And um, those examples are uh, you all might, uh, you, you know, aware about those examples, but uh, try to think about those examples as a social technology and the uh, goals that we want to achieve. So we, uh, we want to achieve uh, frequent communication that bring trust, that generate trust inside the team and uh, make a team from the group of people. And interesting, um, as I mentioned before, I, uh, I do a lot of coding, and now I, car I, I, now I code our um, internal tool that we have in the company. And we recently built a goal management system. Uh, very easy, but uh, the thing is, uh, communication that is appearing here is that we have updates from every team member. Uh, if, when someone uh, finished goal, or writing uh, an update on the goal, it goes to everyone, and everyone sees this progress. And everyone can like or uh, give, uh, yes, uh, just can like this uh, progress. And this communication and this process uh, bring very good, uh, very interesting uh, conversation inside the team. Someone just come and ask uh, how, that uh, how that course was for you. Is, what, is, is it was, uh, uh, like uh, interesting or uh, what you what you learn from it another thing uh, that we also checked and this is the from our experience uh, we did personality and the skill profiles the personality profiles it's very it was very fun uh, again we added uh, this to profiles of our de of our developers and uh, Again, this is was something that lasts maybe for one week. Uh, uh, if you know that uh, Mary uh, Bridge uh, personality test, everyone uh, took this test and we put in our profiles uh, who is uh, like the personality of every team member. And now everyone can uh, can go and see uh, what's the uh, strong points and the weak points of this person. And now it's even more clear to uh, understand why this person is acting this way. S 
So the idea of, uh, uh, of the social technology and uh, building uh, and making it cohesive is that it always starts from the leader's energy. But then uh, the idea is that uh, every team member then empower each other. I recommend uh, those uh, two authors uh, to read. And uh, if this is the something that you will get from uh, this presentation, that will be a really good finding. Um, Henry Ford, his uh, work and life book, and uh, Patrick Lencioni, like, he has a lot of uh, uh, book, but uh, you, can choose, uh, you can choose any, you can start with any. Uh, and the thing is, uh, those two authors uh, build their ideas based on work. Like everything, they, uh, like ideas they, pro uh, they propose uh, to build a cohesive team and to build uh, a good uh, atmosphere on work inside the team is based, and those ideas are, are based on the uh, work process. Not on something outside of the work, but on the work, on job, on those tasks that we are doing. But they provide some uh, good ideas and good uh, thinking about the ways we're doing this. This is all I wanted to share. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, thinking, let's think about ideas uh, we can implement in our teams. So if you have any ideas, that's uh, the good result from, from the presentation. And I'm happy if something was uh, useful for you. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, as expected, there are some questions, and I think the first and the, and, and, and the highest rated question okay. is uh, similar to how to make peace on Earth. Uh, the first one. So what's the best method to make developers show emotions and be honest? <laughs> uh, to show emotions, um, we have to talk, of course, uh, the uh, very simple way is just to have uh, frequent one-to-one uh, -one meetings. It's nothing new and nothing special. Uh, to talk one-to-one, -to, -one, uh, to plan those, uh, those conversations, and, uh, to, uh, and in those conversations, just ask questions that not always relate to work. Try to, uh, try to ask, uh, to, try to find what's interesting for those, uh, for those people. So I think that the very, very, like easy answer is just to talk one to one and frequently. The next question is more more on a coherent team in a in a in a team. So if people grow up together, understand them very well, a subculture in a subculture, uh, how do you integrate them and and how do you break up this uh, special part? Yes, um, in our teams, uh, it uh, sometimes happens this uh, situation. And uh, what we do is that uh, we think about a process uh, that involves uh, team members from different groups or teams. So that uh, could be, uh, for example, um, the local hackathons, and we are forced to mix the teams. Well, like We are not allowed uh, to work on one project teams from one group. And this way, they communicate uh, with, uh, between each other a little. Uh, all those uh, ideas, uh, they are like, it's really, uh, they are simple. So, but we have to find the way how to apply. Um, yeah. So, for, for, for example, the hackathons uh, will work. And of course, work uh, when we go like outside some, uh, and uh, we spend time. Uh, Sport, sport activities helps a lot. Yeah. Okay, and for a developer, what's the best way to influence team processes and team, team behavior? Internal team process. It's a hard to answer. Somehow to, uh, to do this with the team lead, uh, it's not possible, like, to do this uh, without uh, approval from... We, uh, uh, developer need a godfather on this. And if, if he can be uh, 
the, uh, the person who loves this process and, and who wants to do this, and even can manage to do this, he needs someone who will take care about him. So finding someone who helping that, and that leads me to the next question. What if there is not enough time or resources for enthusiast managers or godfathers? Uh, good question. And uh, I didn't mention this, but uh, it's a really good point, because if there, is, if there are no resources, then better not to do anything. Just keep everything as it is. And, and think about what, we can, what, what small step we can apply, uh, but we can uh, follow all those four, um, like four steps. So it's frequent, it's uh, emotional, because if we don't have resources, how it will then uh, end up is that uh, this will be like this. Oh, okay, this will be absolutely the same as I uh, show on the slides. So we say this is our process, this is how we'll, uh, what we will do, but then we don't have resources and uh, it just go down. Uh, there is no re uh, energy uh, to drive this. So it's better just not to start and think about something, very small steps, really very, very small steps that we can do. Even some daily meetings, uh, just to make it daily if we did it uh, weekly. Or, I don't know, something simple. So do nothing. Right. Uh, oh, the questions are switching. So how to integrate emotionally, emotionally and goal-wise remote team members? How to share culture with such team members? Speaking of home offices and... Uh, it's a tough question with remote, uh, with remote teams, but uh, what we, like, it's, it's a hard question, but the solution is simple. Uh, meet together, go to the team, of course, if the team is remote, we can't do this like all the time, but we have to meet one-to-one. Uh, -one. Uh, we, we have to. There is, I don't see any way that we can build a good trust. Uh, like, we can do. But, um, for example, we can uh, um, lose money on something together. So we have to do some emotional thing. For example, we invest, uh, I don't know, in Bitcoin, and then we lose money. Uh, and then uh, with this remote team, we feel together uh, well. We feel well because something emotional combines us. But uh, you have to think about the ideas how to do this. The idea is uh, to have emotions, but it's much more easier when we meet. Exactly. Speaking of we, so how big is the optimal team size? Is there a clear figure or? I, don't know. I feel it's five. Five individuals, Five the individuals. optimal team size. Yes. All right. That's a good, good number. Uh, it's also good for your career. So the smaller the team size, the better for your career. Uh, and the next question is, how do you identify strengths and weaknesses of a team member? Uh, because I'm doing a lot of uh, hiring and, uh, and the interviews, um, you just uh, feel this. Uh, you ask questions, you see how a person uh, answering. Um, and a lot of time I'm uh, giving a chances. So I see uh, potential in the person. Um, so it's more from the experience. I think uh, the, the answer is that experience. You have to talk to a lot of people. And uh, another thing uh, is that uh, I remember my first client, uh, because before I uh, did a lot of freelancing, and uh, my first client uh, I worked with, um, after a, like two or three years, I was wondering how he uh, worked with me like first year. We did uh, crazy things, uh, we did uh, something that was not really working, and he continued to work with me and to give me Maybe not, uh, maybe not the chances, but uh, he still con uh, he was continuing to work with me. And this example, and then uh, we become a friends, and we uh, did a really good thing. Uh, and this example um, gives me, like, sh sh show me this uh, this scenario. So you just uh, believe people. Uh, you. Uh, you see something in this person, and you just give a ch chance and wait. It could be a year. It could be a half a year, but then, uh, but then you see a uh, result. Uh, so one, one uh, recommendation from my side also for that, there is an app for it. It's called Wingfinder. 
surprisingly uh, provided by Red Bull. It's wingfinder.com. You can find your strength. What am I, I'm, am I good at and what not? So that's something we use internally and, and for our athletes, and you can use it too. Uh, and it's all private and secure. No, no worries on that. Okay. Uh, it really helps uh, to identify your own strength and the strength of the team members and the direct reports. Uh, it's rather easy to, to do and handle. Um, right. Uh, how do we enable diverse teams to make the best use of our people's strength? Uh, diverse teams to make best use of people's Maybe strength. Maybe that was too Sometimes aggressive. One person uh, directs in a way too aggressive for another. Yeah, sometimes this happens. And uh, sometimes... Uh, <laughs> uh, you have to be a godfather too <laughs> in those the, the situations. Uh, just uh, sometimes... Uh, because if there is a trust between those team members, uh, we have to start with trust. If we start building it, they can uh, agree. So it could be uh, aggressive, but then uh, they can agree on something and uh, like solve this, uh, those situations. But if not, um, you have to do something with this. Uh, just it depends. If, if, it doesn't, if it couldn't be solved, uh, if this is really aggressive uh, and without respect to other uh, team members, then you fire. But this is the, fo uh, the, this is the final uh, step. Before, of course, you have to uh, try to build the trust, and then um, those uh, team members have to find the solution. Even uh, if they will do uh, the conflicts, and that looks like really aggressive. And that's fine. Aggressive, this is all the, also a source of energy. Yeah, I think as with all, with all diversity, Accept it, live with it, but don't fight against it. Yes. All right, Alexander, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you.